Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome to my rigging channel. Today I want to discuss the differences between creating rigs with armatures versus creating them with objects and empties. This is something that gets discussed quite often and debated quite often on the forums that I frequent, so I wanted to do some comparisons and then you can make a decision for yourself, for your project, in your situation, which is going to be best for you. So I think both um, methods have their merits and uh, their uses so I just kind of want to point out the pros and cons of using them and then try to um, at least give you my thoughts on where each method is going to be valuable and very useful. The first rig that I'd like to demonstrate is a camera rig and this rig was set up with three empty objects. You can see the camera right here and then the empty objects, these three objects right here. If you're not familiar with what an empty object is, it's basically an object that has no physical properties and no renderable properties. It's just a representation of a location, rotation, and scale in space. And these empty objects can be parented to each other in useful configurations. You can also use drivers and constraints on them. So for this camera rig, I have a camera base, and this is basically the master control. Wherever I put it, everything else is going to follow the camera location might change its location obviously the camera is going to go with it you'll notice that the camera is tracking this uh, other empty over here called the camera target and that is being done by a damp track constraint on the camera itself so as you can imagine this is a very useful tool for creating um, advanced camera movements or by automating some camera movements if we were to constrain the camera target to some other object in our scene and then moved it around it would follow it automatically. Now if we wanted to set keyframes and record animation data for this rig what we would need to do is select everything and I can just do I and then cl click location and rotation and in the dope sheet, what I want you to see here is even though this rig is basically acting as a cohesive unit, it has four separate objects making up that rig, and therefore Blender has um, created an action for each one of those uh, parts. So we have the camera, camera action, camera base, camera base action, and so on. Now if we uh, go to the second um, rig here, camera rig, this was created with an armature. Now the armature is currently in object mode, so there's no way to um, manipulate the sub-objects within there until you go to a special mode that's exclusive to armatures and that is called pose mode. So if we select the armature, go to pose mode, you'll notice that now we can select the different parts of that and these different parts are called bones and bones can basically are the same thing as empties. They're just locations, rotations, and scales in space and just like empties you can parent them to each other in useful configurations and also use drivers and constraints on them. Although Constraints for armatures are in their own constraints tab called bone constraints. So basically the functionality of this rig is the same. We have the target, we can change the location of the camera, we have the main controller. There are a couple extra controls because this is a crane rig. Um, so we can boom these out by scaling them. Something else that I should mention is these actually look like bones and these other objects are bones, um, but they're currently set to um, use some custom shapes. So if we click off shapes, now you can see what the bones actually look like in case that was confusing to you. Alright, now if we want to set uh, data uh, and record data for this armature and this rig, what we're going to do is select all of our bones, do I, and we can do location and rotation. What I want you to notice here is because the armature is a single object, um, only one action is needed for it and the armature is made up of multiple um, sub-objects called bones. You can almost think of bones in armatures as a collection of, of empties. So uh, all of the bones transform data and animation data is contained within a single action. Now this is the number one reason why I like to use uh, armatures over object-based rigs for, for most things. So as you can imagine, the more controls you have in your rig, the more objects and actions that you're going to have. So if we go back to the uh, the first rig here, the one created with empties, if we wanted to change the actions or the animation on these objects, we'd need to go to the sub-editor, the action editor of the dope sheet, and then select each one of these objects and disconnect or unlink um, that action from that object. Now if I do this, I'm going to get a, a warning up here that says that because that action is no longer linked to that object, 
Blender will actually flush that data when we save and reopen this file. So let me just do Control Z to get this back. So what you're going to want to do is click the fake user button. And by giving it a fake user, um, it will no longer flush that data. So I usually call this the F-bomb button because it's going to save you a lot of swearing. <laughs> if you don't, uh, just go ahead and click that. So you want to save your data. And this actually happens in a lot of other areas too um, with that F button. Whenever you see that F, click it. Anyways, just a tip. So now we can reset new animations for this. We've disconnected the current animation, and there we go. If we look at our um, in our action editor, uh, the list of actions that are currently available, now we know have instead of four, we have eight different actions for our different parts. And uh, if we contrast that with our armature-based rig, all we need to do is disconnect uh, or unlink our action from that, and then we can just reset some new keyframes to create a new action. And there we go. Um, far easier just to switch uh, with an armature than going in piece by piece for an object based rig and switching those things out. And that can quickly get out of hand if your um, armatures or your rigs get um, as they get larger and larger. So that is one consideration that you should take. Something else that uh, I want to point out here, let me just get rid of my action here, I don't really need it. The bones within the armature. You can see that this bone way out here, let me just turn off shapes here. If we look at the transforms of it, it's location, rotation, and scale. This is clearly, it's telling us that the location is zero and it's clearly not at the center of the world. Now bones have a special ability, uh, for lack of a better uh, way to look at it, is their edit mode position is what determines their zeroed out location. And basically what this means is um, wherever we move this we do Alt G, it's going to come back to that edit mode position. And this is a way where we basically can set up a rig that does not collapse in on itself. And that's a little bit harder to do with an object based rig. So if I go back to the object and let's take a look at our camera target, you notice that its current location, and I can just get rid of this action, I don't really need it. Its current location in the world is negative 2.5 in the Y and 1.5 in the Z. So if I were to move this and I wanted to reset it, if I did Alt G, it would actually go down to world center. So there's no way to set a default position for an empty. You can set new defaults for other types of objects, um, but that's a little convoluted and for another tutorial. Um, so even if I selected this, do Control A, and tried to apply the location, it just is not possible with an empty object. Um, so that gives another, yet another advantage to armatures where bones have a settable default location and we set that default location, rotation, and scale in edit mode. My next demonstration is a rig for a train and I found this train at bunswap.com. It was created by Trainboy1 and he did an absolutely fantastic job of modeling texturing and, and um, creating the rig for this train. As you can see everything moves as you would expect and um, like I said uh, just a huge amount of work uh, involved with this project. What I want to point you to is the again to the um, dope sheet and to create this animation that you're seeing on screen these are all the actions that were needed to um, create the animation that you're seeing because this rig was created with object based rigging. If we contrast that uh, to a rig that I created. Again, this is all based on Trainboy 1's um, work. Um, even the rig itself, he worked out all the hard points, so all the positions and points of rotation for all of this. If I play this animation, I basically just taken all of the mesh objects and reparented them to a single armature and bones within that single armature. So as you can see, form um, the form and function is basically the same. I mean, we're getting the same results. Um, there are a few, uh, again, a few things because it's using a single armature, I can quickly change my animations um, by changing the actions on a single object. So I can go to demo to drive forward. Um, so there's that. A few other things uh, that I'd want to point out, let me get back to my uh, default here. Get rid of my armature select. So this train rig is actually made up of 
159 separate objects. Now as an animator I don't want to have to deal with 159 separate objects so parenting them to a single armature um, is the way to go to simplify it as far as an animation um, standpoint. If we go back to my armature and select it, you'll see that in the armature itself, it took 78 bones in order to create the rig for this um, train. So that's a good saving, 78 versus 159 objects. Uh, but even better than that, the bones that I have uh, on the screen right now, the 22 bones that I have currently selected, they're the only bones that are needed to animate this train rig. So uh, 22 bones to basically um, create an animation for 159 separate objects. So I think that's a, a huge savings here. And um, some of these, if we take a look at um, them, they're very simple. We only need to worry about one transform channel. So these are just going to open doors or windows and other ones. Uh, the other controls as far as a drive wheel, if I just rotate this, I'm getting all the extra animation down here for free, basically all the working parts of this train. So it's nice to set it up that, as far as uh, animation-wise, to create an animation-friendly rig. Uh, I think it's just a little bit easier to do with an, with an armature. Now if I get rid of the controls here, and let's go to the other 56 bones that make up this rig. Let me get rid of the top here too, and I play this animation. You'll notice all of the mechanism bones that are um, causing all the front end here to work. What I want to point your attention to are the yellow bones, because these yellow bones are denoting that they are using an inverse kinematics constraint or an IK constraint. Now, I think that the IK constraint is probably the most useful constraint in Blender for any type of thing you're trying to rig, whether it's a creature, character, um, mechanical object, or anything. Um, and unfortunately, if you want to use an IK constraint, you have to use bones for that. So even if we go to bone constraints here and hover over the tooltip, you see this type of constraint is only uh, for bones. So um, I find this probably the most useful mechanical type of constraint. So if you're going to make a mechanical rig, um, again, I think armatures are the way to go because that will give you access to this type of constraint. Now I will have an IK constraint tutorial coming, um, so I won't stop to tell you exactly what these are all doing, um, but you can rest assured that it's very important and um, consideration um, for your rig or should be. If we go back, you'll notice that our armatures have their own layer system and that's independent of the object layer system. So there's 20 different layers over here and bones actually have 32 layers. So that is another um, consideration as far as um, organizing your rig. Bones have their own layer system. And if we just go down the list here, um, armatures available to only armatures are bone groups. This is helpful for not only animators to select certain groups of bones, but also as as you're rigging, I like to use bone groups for that to help in the rigging process. Also not available with object-based rigs is the pose library. There's no way to set and get and reset poses onto your rigs um, without using an armature. Ghost is something else that is uh, not possible with other objects and ghost is basically a way to um, onion skin um, the positions of the bones and that's very helpful when you're doing animations. Now I won't um, demonstrate that now but it's something that is only again available with armatures. And finally probably the last consideration that you need to make is whether you need to deform a mesh or multiple meshes so uh, armatures are the obvious um, choice for this uh, especially for characters or creatures because you're probably going to need to deform a skin mesh and probably clothing as well um, so I don't think there's even a debate about that um, there are other ways to deform a mesh you can use um, lattices and sometimes surface deform and things of that nature but armatures I think are the clear winner in that situation. Now finally you might be wondering with all of the pros obviously going into the category of armatures when is it um, useful to use any type of object based rigs and there are actually some situations that you can run into uh, where that is useful. So my final demonstration is going to be with these two character rigs here and they are basically, um, they are probably the most basic um, sets of rigs that you can think of. Um, they're just stick figures with no advanced functionality whatsoever. Now if I wanted to have these two characters um, pass a ball back and forth, 
create an animation for that. I've created a simple um, object base rig here with a ball mesh and then I've parented it to a empty object called ball parent. Next I've added two copy transformation constraints, one targeting the first character's right hand and the next copying the transforms of the rig uh, the right hand of the second character. So if I just turn on the influence of that copy transforms constraint, now I can create an animation for this character without having to worry about where the ball is because it's basically acting as a child of the hand at this point. So I can wind up, throw that, and then at the point of release I can turn off this constraint. And you'll notice it's going down to world center, so let me show you a trick really quick. Before you turn off that influence, with the empty selected, I can go to object, apply, visual transforms and that's basically going to set the location and rotation um, of this object as if this copy transform wasn't even there so now I can turn that off animate that ball going across um, to the other character and of course I'll need to reset him at the point where he needs to grab that ball I can turn on the second um, copy transforms uh, influence and now this is a child of character number two he catches it winds up throws it point of release, I can just go back and forth. So this is where object-based rigging really um, comes in handy and it's a way to, uh, in a non-destructive way, because I don't have to change the rigs of either of these characters, um, create a link um, to create some animations uh, doing stuff just like this or having the um, uh, the ability to interact with other objects in your scenes. So this is where uh, object-based rigging really can shine. So I hope these tips have helped you and I hope um, you can see the um, pros and cons of object-based rigs versus armatures. If you like the contents of this tutorial please give me a like and as always subscribe. Until next time, good luck!